Here are three unbelievable games that you've never played on your Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. In today's show, we're going to be taking a look at three games that you've possibly never played on your Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. And that's because they're games from indie developers. Games that are considered homebrew titles, but that are so, so good that they deserve a full physical release and for you to play them. If you're new to the channel, you love your Sega Mega Drive, your Genesis, you just love retro gaming, then why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little button just below this video. And if you enjoy this video, why not share it with everyone? Let everyone know about all the awesome new games coming to this 16-bit console. Now the first game we're going to be taking a look at today is from Retro Souls, created in 2019. It still does not have a physical release and it is an awesome, awesome puzzle game. Now all the games that we're going to be seeing here today are playing on the Keegan emulator on PC. They're not available for physical release yet, but hopefully by releasing this video we can convince one or two of them to bring their game to cartridge. Now when you first start playing our first game, Misplaced, it seems like a very simple game. Your character runs around a level collecting red gems, placing them in a hole, a key then appears, you collect the key and that's the level done. A few levels later, there's even a ghost that appears that makes things just that little bit more trickier. This, however, is actually a very well implemented tutorial. Very subtle, just like Mario, where you have to jump to hit that first coin box. It gets you into the fundamentals of the game, teaches you the rules and controls without you even recognizing that it's a tutorial. Once you have the basics of the game mastered, this is where things really start to switch up, where the magic of this game comes to life. It's around level three or four where the game introduces a mechanic that fundamentally changes what this game is. Soon after starting the game and playing through a number of levels, you get given some special glasses that allow you to record a path with the B button, then play that path back with C. Doing this allows you to walk over gaps and around obstacles. Suddenly each level becomes about the path that you draw to get to the gem. The puzzle is not about getting the gem, it's figuring out what path to draw to get to the gem. It's a truly genius mechanic. At points during the game I felt completely stumped, having no idea what kind of path I need to draw. But suddenly it hits you and you're off drawing paths and replaying them all over the place, navigating the levels like a pro. It's an intensely satisfying game with an extremely clever but simple mechanic. It's the type of game that would be perfect for a modern day console, especially for something like the Nintendo Switch or the PlayStation Vita. There's a nice little story arc that you can choose to interact with by talking to the characters in the levels, or you can just ignore this and play the game for its puzzle brilliance. I'm a big fan of the game's simple pixel art style. It's a modern take on a traditional art form. The limited palette is full of complementary colours that describe the world and its characters without pushing the hardware, but at the same time looks beautiful. As you progress through the game, the levels have some visual changes, like darker levels, but it still keeps you and the character bedded within the world. The soundtrack, like the rest of the game, is simple, modern, but fitting. The soundtrack to the game is so much more relaxing than other games. It allows you to sit down, take your time and solve the puzzles on the screen without it blaring and getting in the way of you actually trying to figure out what you need to do to complete the level. Now some later levels do have some impending dread in their soundtrack but this manages to maintain the calmness of some of the earlier levels. Sound effects are also suitable for the actions on screen and blend in perfectly with the misplaced universe. Overall, I really enjoyed playing Misplaced. That mechanic of being able to draw your path and then replay it to get around obstacles is fantastic. A really unique selling point to this game. And it wouldn't be out of place, like I said, on a modern console, let alone on a Sega Mega Drive. Fingers crossed that the developers in the future can bring this game to cartridge on the Sega Mega Drive. And it'd be awesome to see them bring it to one of the modern consoles as well.
Next up, we have another puzzle game, and it's another game by Retro Souls. These guys seem to have mastered the puzzle genre on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. Alter Ego's up next, and again the team have created another genius mechanic to get you round the levels they've created. In Alter Ego, you play a character that can warp around the level, collecting red items while all the time trying not to be killed by enemies or fall off the edge of the map. Now there are three main ways of navigation. Ladders, walking, and the main mechanic, warping. Now it's the warping mechanic that is your main means of traversing the landscape. And it's done in a very clever way. Now as well as your main character, you have a shadow character, a ghost, that moves in the opposite direction on either the horizontal line or, depending on the level, the vertical line. It sounds complex, but it really isn't. In the levels where your shadow is on a horizontal line, it will move in the opposite direction to you. So if you move left, it will move right. When you move right, it will move left. And conversely, on the vertical levels, when you move up, it moves down and vice versa. Using this mechanic, the developers have crafted some ingenious levels that really get you thinking about how you can collect all these red collectibles. The team even mix it up with some levels needing you to collect shadow items as well. These are white items to go alongside the red items you're picking up. And so you'll be warping left and right, up and down, trying to figure out how to collect everything and not die in the process. You can die by getting hit by an enemy, falling off the edge of the world, or killing yourself if you get trapped. The game seems to have unlimited lives, so you don't have to worry about making a few mistakes. Warping your character around the world is extremely, extremely satisfying. And the first time you do a mid-air warp, there's gonna be a smile on your face. Like Misplaced, Alter Ego also uses a simple but modern art style. It's nothing that pushes the Sega Mega Drive, but at the same time looks beautiful, well executed, and again like something you'd find on the Nintendo Switch or on your PlayStation Vita. Your warp move has a beautiful visual effect with the elements of the world shaking and a purple palette change to the world. It happens for a brief second, but it's so effective. The character and enemies are simple, but have a nice bobbing animation. And the whole visual design of the levels are again simple, well made, and don't detract from the core gameplay. Sound design is like the art style, simple, but effective. It's upbeat and a little quirky, which perfectly suits the world of Alter Ego. The warping sound fits perfectly with the visual effects and makes the move feel like it has some weight to it. The sound effects are on player actions only and do a great job of reinforcing what you're seeing on screen. Retro Souls have done a great job with both of these games, Misplaced and Alter Ego. Alter Ego's warping around makes it a little bit more fast paced, but it again is a genius mechanic and is well supported with some ingenious level design. Again, I think it goes without saying, love to see a physical release of this game. Maybe we could have two games on one cart if that was possible, but it is a fantastic game to play. Our last game that we're going to be taking a look at this show is an absolute stunner. And it's a game that's still in development. It's developed by Kivuta, Kivuta, I don't know, I'm completely butchering the name. If you watch this video, then let me know how you say it in the description below. But needed to say, this game is shaping up to be an absolute stunner. Shrine Made in Shizuka is a Metroidvania styled game. And its developer has been inspired by games like Cave Story, Sonic, Alex the Kid, and The Secret of Mana. Now, as the game name implies, you play Suzuka the Shrine Maiden, who is racing to an island with your fellow Shrine Maiden, Sanaka, where evil spirits have reared their ugly heads. Right from the start, you can see that Shrine Maiden Suzuka is not just some homebrew title. This has real potential to be a AAA title, a modern AAA title on our Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. 
from the splash screen to the intro, Shrine Maiden is already standing up to Sega's classic 16-bit catalogue. The intro also hints at a bigger story, with some nice dialogue between our two heroines as they approach an island. All of a sudden, a malevolent force forces Shizuka and Sanika to crash land with their powers and abilities gone. Now you start the game with Shizuka, and at first all you can do is run and jump to avoid enemies. The developers also recently just added the ability to have two players, and the mechanic works very similar to Sonic 2, with Tails having a more passive second player role. As you venture deeper into the forest, making your way over traditional platforming obstacles, platforms and ladders, you find your first ability. Shoes that allow you to perform a downward attack when in the air. This new ability now allows you to kill enemies with a jump attack, bounce off them to traverse the environment and break destructible bricks within the world. In true Metroidvania style, this gives you access to new areas of the forest to explore and new abilities to find. You'll come across some shrines that restore your life and provide you with a handy checkpoint. Enemies drop coins, health and what looks like to be fans. Currently, I don't know what the coins get you. This could be a scoring system or a currency within the game. The same goes for the fan pickups. They currently don't serve a purpose in the game as far as I can see at the moment. It's not long before you run, jump and kill your way to the first boss. Again, the game shows off its potential here with a well-made boss that has a number of attack patterns that force you to use all your abilities. Now, once you dispatch that first boss, it's time to pick up your next item that gives you your next set of abilities. And it's a parasol. And this is one powerful parasol. As the game quips, it's mainly used to protect you from the sun, but you can also use it to glide, defend against projectile attacks, and it's a freaking lightsaber. Now there are a few more areas for you to explore in the game, but it's around this point where I get stuck. I suspect it's because the game is still in development, but it also could be that I'm just not that good at games. Visually, the game has a very clean art style and is well put together. The vibrant purple forests in the background work well with the mid-ground sprites of your levels. Our main characters are also well realised with some lovely animations, especially when we get to the attacks and the ability moves of each of them. Enemies are a little bit more simple, but still well implemented. There's some nice touches with grass or leaf sprites kicking up as you land on the ground from a jump. And the boss in the game is nice and big, which helps with the urgency of your situation. The developers also brought some nice personality to this boss, which leans into the light-hearted nature of the world that he's crafted. Now, as development continues on this game, I'd love to see the developer bring a little bit more polish to the art style, just to lift it up into the ranks of a AAA game for Sega's 16-bit and Genesis consoles. Something like some foreground parallaxing, a little bit more pixel detail in our mid-ground, and maybe some more peripheral animation, not just on our enemy and our main character. But that's not to say that this game isn't beautifully presented. It's a really nice, solid, cohesive visual style that the developers brought to the game. The sound, like the rest of the game, is impressively implemented. Chat boxes have the classic blips and bleeps as the characters talk. The audio track is context sensitive and changes when your situation changes, like in the boss battle for example. All the sound effects are linked to your character's action, giving you the appropriate audio cues for attack, jump and enemy damage. All sound effects are linked to your character's actions, giving you the appropriate audio cues. Attacks jumping and enemy damage all have the appropriate sound effect to let you know what's happening in game. They reinforce what you're seeing on the screen. Shrine Mage and Suzuki has a ton of promise. The Metroidvania gameplay has been well executed and the special moves and abilities haven't been skimped on. The animation's really nice, the visual style is, if not a little simple, perfectly executed and the audio perfectly sits along the world that's been crafted. This truly could be a great game for all of us Mega Drive and Genesis fans and another addition to these brand new games coming out for Sega's 16-bit classic console. I encourage all of you to please go check out the game and give the developer your support. <laughs>
So three new games for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive outside of the original catalogue of games for Sega's 16-bit console, and all three of them brilliant. Two puzzle games that are fantastic, and a Metroidvania game that has a huge amount of promise. Now this is not the last show where we're going to be showing you homebrew games like these that are so good that they should have a physical release. We've got another show coming up that will showcase another three games that are worth you checking out. Remember, if you're new, why not subscribe? Please share this video if you think it's of interest to other fans of the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive or even just retro gaming fans. And if you haven't already, click on the bell down below and it will notify you whenever we've got a brand new episode of the Retro Gamer Boy Show coming out. If you can't wait until our next show, we've got a huge back catalogue of videos, two of which you can watch over here.